Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out the balance of terror and the Galileo 7 of Star Trek the original series. I've really enjoyed my run of the original series so far. I've watched four episodes and all of those episodes I've actually really really enjoyed so I'm excited to see what these ones are about as well because if I enjoyed the other ones so much then I'm probably going to enjoy these ones as well. Balance of Terror is what I'm going to be watching first so I'll talk about that one. Um, I know that there are Romulans in the balance of terror i don't know if it is the first appearance of romulans on the show if it is this is going to be really really cool and if it isn't it's still going to be really awesome to see romulans in their 1966 form i think that will just be really fun and very interesting to see kind of the start of the romulans well not the start you know it's not going to show like the birth of the romulans it's just like the the start of them appearing in Star Trek, which I think is going to be really interesting. Besides that, I'm just hoping for some more Kirk, Spock dynamics, maybe some other dynamics with other crew members as well, and just kind of a really fun time like the other episodes have been. And before we get into this reaction, let me do the lighting. So let me turn the light, we said what color it should be. Boop! Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the lighting today, I was going to go red at first because Terra kind of brings the red into mind the red color into mind but i'm actually going to go green today because if i remember correctly a lot of the romulan ships are like those green looking things so i'm going to be going green today in honor of what i think the color of romulan ships are and if you'd like to check out more of my reactions you can head over to my patreon of uncut reactions to many of the movies i watch on youtube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early thank you so much if you check it out now let's get back to the video okay Let's get into this episode. I hope you enjoyed my reaction to Star Trek, the original series, season one, episode 15, The Balance of Terror. A call for you from the bridge. Why does Bones just always look so upset every time? Keep me informed. Kirk out. What's happening to the outposts? I bet knowing the Romulans are in this episode that the Romulans are attacking the outposts. Oh, wait, an onboard marriage? She is so tiny, unless she's on her knees. Okay, I thought she was just a really small person. In accordance with our laws and our many beliefs. So that you may pledge your- Alert! Oh, no, not during the marriage. Outpost 4 reports they're under attack. Space vessel, identity unknown. Pull ahead. Unknown, must be the Romulans. Is this actually going to be the first time we encounter the Romulans? Space, the final, final frontier. These are the voyages of the- Sorry, it's early in the morning. No identification, sir. There can't be much doubt who's attacking, sir. Why? How do you know? So Outpost 4 are just too preoccupied with getting attacked and seeing who the attackers are. Oh, nice shot there. Stations constructed on asteroids, they monitor the neutral zone. Yeah. Nor was there even ship-to-ship -ship visual communication. No human, Romulan, or ally ever seen the other. Really? Entry into which by either side would constitute an act of war. This is so interesting. I love this. Since that time. I like this history for the crew members, but also for us audience members. And this vessel will be considered expendable, Captain. Up. Oh my god, the stakes already made so high at the start of this episode. Romulans now, after a whole century, what will a Romulan ship look like? I also really like the idea that they've never seen one before, like no one has ever seen one before. That is so cool. Their war, Mr. Styles. Mr. Styles might be going rogue this episode. Don't forget it. Yes, sir. But also, Sulu's driving. Did you see that? Oh, let's go. Finally. Overized. But why would the Romulans be attacking the outposts? Do they want war? All battle stations, Mr. Sulu. <laughs> this episode is so good. To be your officer. So get with it, mister. Show ready. She's like, oh, you're right. Oh, man. A minute's away, Hanson. What's your status? Outpost two, three, and eight are gone. Wow. Confirm what hit you, Hanson. What vessel? Identity. Space vessel. Space vessel. Good try. Negative. It seems to have disappeared somehow. Oh, it's their invisible ships. It's their birds of prey. Some form of high energy plasma. Fantastic. I love the lighting on Kirk here. Enterprise. 
something coming on her viewing screen. Oh no. Oh no. Can you see it? Becoming visible. Oh, hello there. I'm trying to, sir. They don't acknowledge. What the heck? This poor man's about to die. And then it disappears. Oh my god. Romulan's kind of cool. Wouldn't Spock have a good idea of what Romulans look like though, considering that Romulans used to live on Vulcan as well? Could be the intruder. Go to full magnification. Screen is on full mag, sir. I love invisible ships. It's kind of cheating though. Most have them signal us any sightings or sensor readings in their area. Lip has changed. I also really like in Star Trek how a lot of things are attempted to be explained by science, even and even the invisibility. What do you do now? The Romulans have gone through the neutral zone. Is it a declaration of war? Under no circumstances are you to cross into the neutral zone without my direct orders. Acknowledged, sir. Thank you, Sulu. Romulans have crossed the neutral zone. Attacked our outpost, killed our men. Mr. Stiles. Ad okay, but you still don't want a war. We could have Romulan spies aboard this ship. How? Why? I believe I can lock on it. Sounds like a mouse. I love the lighting in this episode. Oh, look at that. I love that the security camera had to push it onto the Romulan. Now people are gonna think Spock, people are gonna think Spock is a spy. Guys, don't worry, he's not a spy. They just look the same. I made a tape of it, sir. Very well. I love these discs. Something visual ahead, Captain. At extreme range. There it is. There's the ship. It's not green though, so my lighting is just a failure. Turning, sir. There's a green button on the control panel of the Enterprise, so my lighting is actually for that green button now. Cloaking system on, sir. Their outfits kind of look like chainmail. They're kind of cool. If an Earth ship, why does he not attack? Don't want to start a war. Carelessness might have ended this glorious mission. You're reduced two steps in rank, return to post. Oh my god, that sucks. We'll follow, he must. And when he attacks, we will destroy him. That's what you think, bud, but I know there's three seasons of this show, plus movies. Oh, back to the first course. Kind of really awesome seeing the Romulans right now. The first time I think we've ever seen them in Star Trek. It's pretty awesome. Leon 111 Mark 14, back on their original course, Captain. Toward the neutral zone. The camera work is also really good in this episode. Like, the way that it's using these tight spaces of the bridge to do some really cool angles is very interesting. Substance known to our science. <laughs> and Spock can destroy it. it really comes down to... Millions and millions of lives hanging on what this vessel does next. Or yeah, exactly. Run away from them and you guarantee war. They'll be back, not just one ship, but with everything they've got. Wow, this guy. Science officer, you're the expert in these people, but you've always- But I can see his reasoning, which is really good. I agree. Attack. You suggest- Interesting. Then attack becomes even more imperative. War is never imperative, Mr. Spock. But why does it become more imperative? And if the Romulans retain this martial philosophy, then weakness is something we dare not show. It leaves a visible trail. Ah, our chance, gentlemen. That's a good idea. Oh, that's kind of genius. So they're going to go after the ship. This means war. I hope we won't need your services, Bob. Oh, but you may. I actually can feel the tension in the of every single thing that they're doing in this episode. I think it's really well done. Swing around the other side and catch him at that moment. Acknowledge, Captain. Good plan. Behold a marvel in the darkness. You spoke of entrapment. What are they doing? They must know that they're going to be visible. At last, the screen is clear, Commander. Clear. Our reflection no longer follows us. Ah, you've been duped. Signal ready, sir. He'll only be visible for a moment. Stand by. So it's kind of like when they were in the nebula in Star Trek 2. I don't see them at all. Start a starboard help. Start a starboard. 
I love this. This is just a game of tactics over and over and over again. No shots fired or anything. They're just trying to figure out each other's next move. Fire. Oh my god, the sound effect's so good. No, not this guy. Not the old one. Divert all power to weapons. If you fire weapons, though, you become visible, right? We'll take time to correct, sir. Captain, are they surrendering? They are not surrendering. They are doing the opposite. Pull the stern. That was a sick shot. Dodge it, dodge it, dodge it, dodge it. Navigation. Estimated it'll overtake us in two minutes, sir. Come on, fix the phasers. Ten seconds to impact. Oh god, he should tell the crew that they're all about to die. Dissipating, sir. It must have a range limit. Why is she so close to him? One. Impact. But it was like a weaker version of it. And now phasers online. Yes. Shooter holding steady. Course 111, Mark 14. What if you fired into Mark 15? I like these ships though, they look kind of cool. Its commander is not one to repeat a mistake. <laughs> ah, yes, thank you. How is this episode going to end? I have no idea. Their weapon takes all their energy. They must become visible in order to launch it. A phase. Yes. I'm aware of that, Mr. Styles. Our phase is ready. But luckily, luck is on our side. <laughs> Oh yes, I love the look of the phasers. On my responsibility, we are proceeding into the neutral zone. Oh my god. That shot was so cool. Centurion is dead. Why don't we fire, Commander? They know he's beat. He knows he's beat. But I must use all my experience now to get home. Plastiform and a body, Captain. A body? Oh nice. Oh no, you just put the debris into the chute and shot it out into space. Simple debris, not a vessel. Oh, it's a distraction. The silent waiting game in hope of regaining contact. Captain. Oh, the lights. Now, 20 full cycles, Commander. Still no sign. You don't have to whisper, it's okay, they can't hear you. It's log, supplemental. Now motionless for nine hours, 47. Nine hours. Why me? I look around that bridge. I see the men waiting for me to make the next move. What if I'm wrong? You're not wrong, Jim. There's a mathematical probability. Three million Earth-type planet. And in all of the three million million galaxies like this. And in all of that, only one of each of us. Don't destroy the one named Kirk. Oh my god, that was so good. Bones gave me some chills there. <laughs> Oh no, Spock, no, man. We have him. Move to. They lost the waiting game. <laughs> I like that the music was on beat with the phaser blast there. That was cool. The end of the truth. Jesus. We have some of the old style nuclear warheads aboard. Oh my god, they're gonna use nuclear warheads? Phasers, fire, point blank. Phasers, fire! <laughs> Oh no, what happened? 22 so far. Mainly radiation burns, mostly from the ship's outer area. Oh, radiation burns? Oh god, that could be bad later. In kind, sir. Our phasers detonated it less than 100 meters away. Ship down. Less than 100 meters away. Go. Lieutenant Uhura, take over navigation. Yes, yes Uhura. Maybe we can pull them back to our side of the new. Hold our position. Yeah, lure them in. I like it, Kirk. I do not trust that captain. We are in the neutral zone. See, this captain is smart, but his superiors, or not his superiors, his unsuperiors, I guess. Permit me the glory of the kill, Commander. Oh my god. They're the ones who's gonna get everyone killed. This time we'll handle things without your help, Vulcan. 
Oh my god, get off the ship. Take him to the airlock and cast him out into space. Fire. Fire! Oh no, they don't have access to them. Styles. Oh my god, is he dead? The person that the lady was gonna marry to is dead. Oh, nice work. Good work. Ooh, this is an epic shot. The first communication, person to person. Standing by to beam your survivors aboard our ship. Prepare to abandon your vessel. We don't abandon. We are creatures of duty, Captain. Just one more duty. Blow up the ship. There they go. So that he could return to duty. I'm capable of no other feelings in such matters. <laughs> Only one. Tomlinson. Yeah, the... Oh, man. His fiance's at the chapel now. That hurts me. That's a really good shot. There are really good shots in this episode. Vincent McEviti, he did such a good job directing. And that was my reaction to the balance of terror. I really liked that episode. And I think, I think, I'm like 99% sure that, that was the first appearance of the Romulans in any Star Trek media. I mean, obviously this is the first piece of Star Trek media, but I think this is the first episode with the Romulans in as well. And it was so interesting. I really liked how they did it where everyone knew of the Romulans, but they never had seen them before because the starships and stuff were so were so old fashioned. I guess back then it was like centuries ago or a century ago. And so everyone just communicated through radio and stuff like that instead of there was no visual contact of them. And even their ships, they were like like the birds of prey. Someone mentioned bird of prey at the beginning of the episode, but I don't think anyone had really seen a Romulan ship until this episode, which was really awesome as well. I was a little confused about how Spock wouldn't know of the Romulan people and that they would look like him because I would have thought that he would have learned that in like Vulcan history or something when he was learning that in school just because Romulans are like they were Vulcans and then I'm pretty sure that they were Vulcans who started to believe in emotions and stuff who started to have emotions who started to want to have emotions in their life or something like that and then they went off Vulcan and went to Romulus. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm like half right or something like that. But yeah, I would like to know exactly how that happens. But I would have thought Spock would have known about this. Maybe it happened so long ago that they don't teach it anymore. Or maybe Vulcans are so like sad about it or so ashamed about it that they don't teach it in the first place. Kind of like some countries and them teaching or slash not teaching historical events of their own past because they are ashamed by it or want to hide it from their own people. Even even my country, Canada, used to do that quite a bit and probably still does that quite a bit, you know? So it's a very common thing to do that. So I wouldn't put it past Vulcan if they did that about the Romans and just decided not to teach that to their school kids. Anyways, that's not the point. This episode was so good. This was my favorite episode so far. And I think it's just because it felt kind of like a stage play to me, which I thought was really interesting. I know that William Shatner is a stage performer or was a stage performer. He's a very, like, I don't know, extra actor, I guess. And you, it kind of came out in this performance, but it really worked. And I really like the use of the camera in this episode because we were on the bridge of both ships the entire time. There was no off-world traveling. We were very contained to very few rooms of the ships on both sides, like Romulan and Enterprise. And I thought it was done so well. The camera work by whoever, whatever his name was, I think his first name was Vincent, was phenomenal. The shots, the shot compositions of having a character in foreground and a character in the background a lot of times. You can see both of their reactions. Maybe they'll both talk in the same shot it was just very well framed there are so many shots of kirk that were so well done that felt so epic the one where he was like we must go into the neutral zone that little like speech the way that he speaks first of all felt very play like very theatrical to me where he like paused every like second word and made it super dramatic but the camera with this slow pan tilt like slowly turned up towards him 
oh, and like zooming into his face. That was such a good moment. It gave me some chills there. There were so many moments like that in this episode and I thought it was done so well and the bridge never felt boring considering we were on it the entire time the bridge never felt boring the camera always found new and interesting angles to find itself in order to make the scene appealing over and over and over again in order to make the set not feel stale and I thought the camera work of this episode was fantastic I thought it was funny that when they were on the Romulan ship and we were viewing it through the Enterprise like it was like the camera on the Romulan ship we still had the camera movements which I thought was so interesting it was like the security camera was just some handheld cameras some guy was carrying that he was zooming in and out of trying to make like really nicely composed shots and I know it was there for the audience and stuff and I'm not really thinking too much of it it's not a detriment to this episode i thought it was just funny that like for example the first time we see a romulan oh my again. god just shut up the first time we saw a romulan the camera zooms into the romulan's face so the audience obviously can see what a romulan looks like and then it's like oh it looks like spock and stuff like that but like a security camera wouldn't actually do that or whatever camera they have wouldn't actually do that. I just thought it was kind of funny. But yeah, this episode was really good. I really liked the tactical balance between the two. It was kind of very poetic almost between the two captains and their tactical ability. I loved the waiting game. I thought that was really awesome. Phasers in this episode were so cool. The sound effects for them were awesome. I loved the explosions that they had. Just this whole episode in general was very exhilarating. The tension and the stakes were set at the very start and then just kept rising and rising and rising and rising and I thought that was done really well the Romulans were really cool tension between the two sides and the really like cool intelligence of the captains like you could see how intelligent Kirk was and he was faced off against someone who was also pretty intelligent I thought that Romulan captain was really good commander was really good and he was almost forced into the situation at hand by the people working for him instead of him making that decision because initially he wanted to go home so I thought that was really interesting and yeah, overall, I thought it was a really good episode. My favorite episode of the show so far. And I can't wait to get into the next one. So let's get into it. The next one is Star Trek Season 1, Episode 17, The Galileo 7. Let's start it now. Captain's Log, star date 2821.5. En route to... Wow, that is sexy. Investigation. On board is Galactic High Commissioner Ferris. Over... <laughs> That reveal when he said the name was kind of fun. And the rendezvous doesn't take place for five. Okay, but something's gonna happen here. It's cleared for takeoff. This is epic. All go. Launch shuttlecraft. This is a really cool shot. This is digital though. This is digital. I wonder what the actual model work of this would have looked like. Spock, phasers are extremely disruptive. Just how much we don't know. Considerably, Mr. Ball. Is something bad gonna happen to these seven? Considering the episode's called the Galileo Seven. They're gonna get stranded in the quasar. We are out of control, being pulled directly into the heart of Murasaki Three One Two. There are a bunch of cast members, and then there are the other cast members. Those ones could die. At least four complete solar systems in the immediate vicinity. And out. Wow. <laughs> Finding a needle in a haystack would be child's play. And we're gonna do it. Space. The final, final frontier. frontier. These, These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Captain's log, star date That nebula though looks really good. Without them we are blind and almost helpless. Aurora needs to wear some pants. <laughs> she must be cold on the bridge. It's just about dead center of the Murasaki effect. Let's go to it then. Everyone okay? Yeah, luckily you have a doctor on board. And we were simply shot into the center of the effect. Well, like a projectile. Like a projectile? Did you say projectile? Just the uh, facts, doctor. Traces of Argon Neon Krypton. Krypton? We're on Krypton, Superman's home. It's as widespread as I believe it is, Doctor. Searching for us without instrumentation, by visual contact only. Spock's a genius. This is the captain speaking. Flight deck. Prepare. This guy in the background looking so smug. I hate him. Eight to continue the search, Commissioner. You don't really think you'll have any luck, do you? 
Can you shut up? I'm going to kick you out of the airlock if you keep talking. A big chance. For what, Doctor? Command. Logic was the best basis on which to build a command, am I right? Fair enough. Enjoy the idea of command. Nor am I frightened of it. It simply exists. It's, yeah, okay. We'll have to lighten our load by at least 500 pounds. The weight of three grown men. Uh, okay, we'll kick three off. Draw straws. Use virtually every piece of equipment aboard this craft in attaining orbit. Except There's for the chairs. Weight. Take the chairs out. I'm better qualified to make the selection than any random drawing of lots. All right, Mr. Spock. So he's basically saying the three people on the ground are the most insignificant. His heart. His heart. Why are Bones' eyelashes so nice? Are these guys gonna die? You know what, if they die, you only need to leave one person. Let's get out of here. And if three people die, you don't even have to make a choice. They're already dead. Oh, whoa, what? Okay, well, there's one gone. You'll need to make a decision on two now. That looked like a caveman, though. What are you shooting at? I don't doubt your word. Oh, there must be something. I swear I hit it. Wow, that is a huge spear. 1925 Old World Calendar. New Mexico, North America. I was say, yeah, it looks like a caveman spear. And back to the ship should not interfere with our repair efforts. If you need assistance, I will do it. Give me a hand with Latimer, will you? This is Spock at his most Vulcan that we've seen. I don't relish the thought of abandoning your crewmen out there. However, I must remind you... I haven't forgotten, Commissioner. This is the only thing that you have to say. Every 10 minutes, you're like, I have to remind you that you're running out of time. Like, I know, shut up. Mind your helm, Mr. Yes, sir. Let's hope that they're on the ones that, they, that you see and not the ones that you miss. We should be able to scrape up another 100 pounds. Which would still leave us at least 150 pounds overweight. That's just one human. Vacation. Mr. Spock, that's your place. My place is here. If you ah, uh, they're gonna probably teach him to be a little human, to touch on his human side. First things first, I hope to increase our chances of staying alive. Dude, Spock would be infuriating. I would want to whack him a little bit. We have no fuel. What alternatives? Mr. Scott, there are always alternatives. Yeah, Mr. Scott, come on, obviously. More likely a loose association of some sort. If we knew more about them, we, we know enough. We, we don't know anything. Our dangers to ourselves as well as our duties to other life forms. Friendly or not. Wow. Wow. You saw what they did to Latimer? I am in command, Mr. Gitano. The orders and the risk. Violence doesn't mean peace, you know? Like, violence will just lead to more violence. <laughs> there they are. Look at that giant spear. I hope they're giant people, too. Hope they're not just like normal people with giant spears. Oh my god. Yeah, they must be giant people. Take aim, please, and fire when I give a signal. Are they gonna listen? Yeah, it looks like they are. Did I scare them off? Or did it make them angrier? Mr. Gatano, you remain on guard here, keeping contact with the ship. I would not want to stay here by myself. It's all very well, but we don't have a substitute supply. Aye, we do. Our phasers. I can... Oh, you lose your weapons, so you can't defend yourself, but you can escape. Oh, that looks pretty good. Oh my god, he got hit by a giant boulder. I bet his hand's broken. They're really bad at throwing these spears though. It's like they're just dropping them. Ha! <laughs> the arms up. Rah, give me a hug. Rah. I love it. Do you really think the ship will ever leave? Yes. Is he dead? He's gonna take him back to the ship. Oh, he's learned. Oh 
my god. They actually suck at throwing. Well, okay, that one was pretty close, actually. That one was a failure, though. Yeah, they know he's dead. The Galileo 7 has become the Galileo 5. Act emotionally? With anger? Doctor, I'm not responsible for their unpredictability. <laughs> My opinion, Mr. Boma. They don't study. Step by step, I have made the correct and logical decisions. Yeah, but it's not working. Right. Because you can't always think logically. How much longer, Mr. Scott? Another hour, maybe two. Won't be long. Hour. Captain's log, star date 2823.1. I love the green. Ah, oh, you know what? The green works with my lighting, though, so that's good. It's by candlelight if necessary until the last possible moment. Keep your nose off my bridge, I'd be thankful. Yeah, you are a nosy rat man. Oh, nice. Gentlemen. All right, Mr. Bowman, you'll have your burial. Yes. Thank you. Number two has been beamed back to four ship. They have casualties. One dead, two injured. Wow, more casualties? Captain Kirk. Stop it. Check your chronometer. You'll see it is 28, 23.8. Can you stop? This is your only reason to be in the show. Set course for Marcus 3. Uh, come on, get off the ground. What about the other systems? No, sir. Too much interference. Captain. Course set for Magus 3. Ooh, nice camera shot here. <laughs> 23 minutes to find everyone. We have very few alternatives, Mr. Spock. Yeah, I may as well re-land and try and survive on this planet. Gentlemen, ship will lift off in exactly 10 minutes. I was wondering, why is it so green outside? Is that just like a blue screen or something? or? Ah, uh, it just looks weird. Further orders. Okay, let's get in, let's get in. Spock trying to throw the spear back. Oh my god, no. Spock, we couldn't leave you out there. Get us off, Scott. We should be moving, but we're not. Why? Ah, uh, they're in orbit, they're in orbit. Tapping our boosters. Ended our last chance for a soft landing. Oh no. I may have been mistaken. Well, at least I've lived long enough to hear that. <laughs> our present fuel, that gives us about 45 minutes. 45 minutes to contemplate your death, basically. Surprise. Come in, please. The look of no hope on all their faces. Mr. Spock! The fuel's exhausted. Say six minutes. You're trying to get their. You're trying to get their attention somehow. There it is again. Hold him steady, Captain. Spock, go for him. Cool, almost me. Wow, that looks really good. That looks really cool. Perhaps that was worth it. No one out there to see it. Oh, that's what you think. Oh no. Transporter's locked in, sir. Beam them up. Activate beam. Instead of beam them up, Scotty, it's beam up, Scotty. Whatever it was, Captain. It just burned up in the atmosphere. Oh my god, nick of time. Alive and well. I bet right now he's like, yeah, I'm the best. That's why I'm Captain Kirk, I'm the best. Mr. Sulu? Proceed on course to my- Oh, look at his emotions. You can see some tears in his eyes. He's welling up. Oh, man. Possible action would have to be one of desperation. Logical decision, logically arrived at. Ah. Uh, I think that was part of your human side. You committed a purely human emotional act. No, sir. <laughs> It 
it's nice to see everyone laughing together. And that was my reaction to the Galileo 7, the, I, I don't know, the 17th episode, I guess, of Star Trek, the original series. That was a pretty fun episode. I don't think I liked it as much as the last one I watched as Balance of Terror, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit. I really enjoyed the Spock angle of this episode and the character development that Spock got. I know we're on episode 17, but since I've only been watching like sporadic episodes throughout this season, it's been like Spock hasn't gotten as much character development as maybe I've wanted. I've really enjoyed him on screen a lot of times and I think his dynamic is really great with Kirk and the rest of the crew, but we haven't really had a moment where Spock has really shone to his fullest extent. And I think this was the episode for that because Spock was center stage. Spock, I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, was the main character of this episode. And he was the one who went on the journey in this episode, this character development in this episode. And he finally kind of came into contact with the human side of himself, which was really, really cool. I'm pretty sure though, in an episode before this that I watched, Spock had this very human moment as well, but maybe I am mistaken. I just don't remember the moment, but I seem to recall me thinking that there was a very human moment for Spock in one of the episodes that I watched previously, but everyone was saying that this was the first time that he took a very human emotional moment for his character. And you know what? I can agree. It was a very emotional outburst from him, but it was a very smart idea Well, as well. It was like a flare in the night sky. And by the way, those effects looked really good. Some of the effects in this episode were definitely a little iffy with like the CGI and stuff like that, the updated CGI. It looked like some of it looked a little janky, but some of it too, the nebula looked beautiful. Well, it wasn't a nebula, it was a quasar, right? The quasar looked stunning. I'm so glad I had green lighting and I forgot to change it for the next episode because it worked perfectly for the quasar. So it's almost like I'm a genius, like I knew. And then also like the planet and when Spock was going around jettisoning the fuel and then he w turned into almost like a star in the distance as they kept flying along that was a really gorgeous shot and the effects looked pretty good and they looked they looked beautiful I can't even lie they looked pretty beautiful I don't know it just kind of looked like a painting in those moments other than that I liked what was happening on the planet I liked everyone's involvement I like it was Spock and the rest of humans because then you have everyone's like human interpretation of the scene and then you have Spock's logical interpretation so I really liked the conflicts that kind of arose there and also the indigenous of the planet or whatever you want to call them they were very interesting it was kind of cool that we never actually got a good look at them we saw one from the back and then we saw one from the front but very far away so you never really got a detailed look at what they looked like and i thought that was a good choice because it just made them scarier than they probably would have looked like because everyone knows that if you can't see something it is scarier than when you see it because your imagination makes up a lot more scarier looking creatures than visuals can ever put onto. And so I like that we didn't see these creatures. I thought it was funny that they could like not throw their spears. I mean, I know they had like good aim and stuff and they were good at throwing and they were big and they were strong because you know they were killing people with their spears but like when you saw the characters running away and the spears it was like you could tell that there were like people behind the rocks who had the spears and then they would just like chuck the spears like that but it just didn't look like they could throw the spears at all because the spears would fly like a foot and then land super far away from Spock or super far away from anyone else and it was just it was just kind of funny this was definitely I would say a cheesier episode with those creatures involved when the creatures weren't involved it was a really cool intense episode but whenever those creatures were involved I just couldn't really take everything super seriously because I thought that they were just kind of cheesy like when that guy died and the creatures walking up to him like this it was just I don't know it was really funny I don't know it was really funny he's like Rah, like slowly walking up to him and then gives him almost like a, a hug like it was cool but it was it was still like cheesy and funny it just gave me like Star Trek the original series vibes and it didn't take anything away from the episode for me. It was just like a nice fun moment in an otherwise more desperate episode. Desperate in terms of just like, like not serious per se, but there are things going on that could lead to character death. So desperate, like they're in a desperate situation sort of deal. There were also a lot of like push-ins and push-outs in this episode, which I thought were kind of fun. It just, I don't know, it just kind of added a lot of, of fun to the camera work as well. Like there were a lot of moments where the camera would push in onto Kirk or push in onto a character talking or push out to see the whole bridge. There were moments like that. There was a nice moment in this 
episode where we got to see the whole bridge laughing at the very end. I thought that was a really sweet moment. It's nice to see everyone kind of together and laughing and having a good time. And then that stupid what's-his-face com commander guy who was on, who was just telling Kirk the time every 10 seconds, was so annoying. I don't want to whack him every three minutes, just kick him out the airlock or something. His only reason to be on this show was to sh sh give the audience the time limit, but it was so annoying. If someone was like that and every 10 minutes they came up to me like, remember, you're on a time limit and there's an hour left and then like 10 minutes later remember there's only 50 minutes left now i would get i would punch him in the i don't know i don't even know what i do but it was annoying and he was annoying and i'm glad that he he didn't even get a comeuppance i guess but i'm glad that they got to rescue everyone and now they're still going to go and give the, deliver the play materials whatever you want to call it but yeah he was an annoying character i hope he never returns and besides that, I don't really have anything else to say on the episode. It was a decent episode overall. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't my least... I don't know if I have a least favorite of the episodes. It just wasn't my favorite one. But it was still a really good episode, in my opinion. Besides the, the, the creatures on the planet, which I thought were a little cheesy. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I'm excited for the next episode, which is Space Seed. I'm dedicating a whole video just to that episode because I am really excited to see Khan in that episode, the first episode we ever see Khan in. So that's going to be a treat. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next Star Trek, the original series reaction.